All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. If this is your first time here, my name is James, and this is Killing It Country. I'm gonna do a quick little video for you today. The heavy hitch for my Kubota BX25D has come in. So we're gonna get the three-point hitch off the tractor. We're going to install the heavy hitch, and, uh, and then we're gonna get the backhoe installed on the tractor. We're gonna do like a basic functionality test for the hydraulics, I guess, just to make sure that the backhoe is gonna work fine after I have installed the rear remotes. I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't work, but we're gonna do it anyway. And then we're going to uh, have a look and make sure that the, uh, the ergonomics of the tractor are still intact after I actually physically installed the remotes onto the tractor. I just wanna make sure that the, the swiveling of the seat isn't gonna interfere with the bracket. I wanna see what the leg room is gonna be like and that sort of thing. And, uh, and that should make for a good quick little video for the day. So uh, if I forget to mention it at the end of the video, I'll mention it now. Guys, check out this long range forecast. That is ridiculous. It's gonna be such a nice day out. If uh, I, I would be totally okay if you just turned me off right now and went outside. Uh, so yeah, take the opportunity to get outside today or tomorrow or any day. It's gonna be beautiful. All right, this is gonna be fun. Let's do it. these four bolts, take this plate off, and install this. Oh, it's good and thick, eh? Well, it was good. Well, I looked at many other manufacturers of the same thing, and this is by far the thickest I could find. So this, this should work well. I'm gonna get that Woodland Mills uh, wood chipper off my trailer as well today, but I need the forks for that and I will not be able to lift that thing unless I get some weight on the back of this tractor. So we're gonna get the back hole on first. Let's do that now.
Well, that was harder than it had to be. Let's go back over to the other garage and we'll get that trailer moved to get the wood chipper unloaded. And we'll have a look at how this uh, remote hydraulic block could potentially uh, interfere with the operation of the backhoe. Okay, so I got the backhoe back on this thing. That was not a lot of fun to put this thing on. As soon as you put any pressure on this thing with the tractor, it's, it's sliding on the ice, the tractor's sliding on the ice. Nothing lines up the same as it did in the fall when I took it off because there's now two or three inches of ice on the ground. So the tractor's higher, but this thing's still sitting on the gravel. It's a bit of a pain, not ideal. I need a nice big shop with a cement floor and have everything mounted on nice rollers so I can move it around. Maybe one day. Um, so right off the bat, uh, I'll probably make a few changes with the way that these hoses are routed when I have the backhoe on just to make things a little cleaner. Stuff won't get caught in my boots and that kind of stuff. But uh, I mean, we'll see. we'll see how my leg fits down in here. Let's adjust this one hose right now before I even try it so that it sits down tighter, a little closer to that fender. Honestly, you wouldn't even notice that it was there. It doesn't, doesn't touch my leg, it's comfortable. This might even be a good spot to connect the, uh, get a hydraulic thumb on this thing, because I do have the mechanical thumb, but if I wanted it to be hydraulic, I suppose I could hook this up. I haven't done any research to see if that's safe or anything like that, but <laughs> it's an option. And honestly, once I get my KX040 that's supposed to be coming in a couple of months, I might not ever use this backhoe ever again. Uh, some guys are saying they're still handy to get into some tight spots, but I don't know. Um, so yeah, some of you guys wanted to see the, the ergonomics of this kind of an install and see how it affected the tractor and the functionality of the seat and that sort of thing. I can't see this being a problem. Uh, I will probably get off of the backhoe in this direction only from now on because I don't want to be catching my shirt on the handles of, uh, of the spool valve. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be too bad. Um, all right, I got the forks on this tractor now, so I'm going to go uh, get that trailer hooked up to the truck and we'll unload that chipper and put it somewhere. That's what's next. All right, got the trailer hooked up to the truck, got the plastic off the wood chipper. Ooh, it's frozen and icy down there. So, there she is. I think this thing weighs about five or six hundred pounds. So I will find a spot in a snowbank to stick this selfie stick. Hockey stick selfie stick. And you guys can watch me struggle like an idiot to get this thing out of here.
not sketchy at all. The only reason I'm able to get that thing that high in the air is because it was already off the ground because it was in the trailer. So whatever I put it down on might not be able to lift it back up with the BX. So let's go find a skid. It's just sitting on that metal frame right now and if the ground thaws, those little metal legs will just disappear into the slop. I got a nice pile of skids here. That one on top looks just perfect. Sure is nice to have the uh, the backhoe back on the tractor. It's almost like it was designed to have it there. Ha! <laughs> All right, get this thing put on the skid, and then I gotta go buy some drywall and some two by fours. Alright, that's that. The wood chipper's off, the trailer's emptied, the backhoe's back on, the hydraulic block seems to work, the ergonomics are good. If you have any other questions about that thing, just drop a comment. I'll do my best. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, like, share, Instagram, at Killing It Country. And uh, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you in the next one.